Hey, what's happening, buddy? A few weeks ago, I noticed that Bootstrap changed their homepage. Instead of going to Bootstrap 4, they've officially set their default now to Bootstrap 5 beta. And now that it is the default setting, and it did come out in alpha last year, but I still felt like I was a little reluctant on doing anything about it until it officially hit the homepage. Well, it did, and it's got a cool little logo too. I wanna go over the three biggest changes that will affect your designs going forward using Bootstrap 5. And with that, let's get started. So the first big change in Bootstrap 5 is the addition of the larger breakpoint. We've always had breakpoint sizes in Bootstrap with XS being a mobile site, small, medium, large, and XL being the largest, but now we have something larger. If we scroll down in this page in the breakpoints, we now have the extra extra large or the XXL going at 1400 pixels or smaller and then the extra large hitting at 1200 pixels. So what I mean by that is I can then change the breakpoint to use the XXL. So if I wanna use this hello world, which I have right here, hello world, and I say, you know what? On the XXL, add a margin top of five. So what I can do is, now I can say class, and say margin top, XXL, and then five rem. What that's gonna do is, when I save this page, I'm gonna pull it back a little smaller, when I refresh the page, nothing is gonna work, because by default, there is no margin top. However, when I move my size beyond the XXL, Oop, it just drops down. So the XXL contains breakpoints within your entire design. This can be especially helpful if you have a wider, bigger design that goes beyond traditional XL of Bootstrap 4. Speaking of margin top, something else changed within Bootstrap 5, and it's spacing. Spacing was there within Bootstrap 4 and the previous versions within Bootstrap, but they changed the way spacing works. So instead of using left and right, they use start and end. The reason for that is with the spacing. If we scroll down the page, now what you're gonna get is you're gonna get S and E for the spacing on the left and right side. The reason for that is if you were to go from left to right, and then you were to change, let's say in Arabic, from right to left, then the left and right in theory is backwards. So to fix that, what Bootstrap did was they started to use S and E. So the start is the left-hand side, if we're in English, we'll just go with that for right now since I'm using a Western English setup. And there's also the E or the right side for the margin right or padding right. So let's take a look and see how to use this. What I'm gonna do is instead of saying MTXXL5 from the previous example, let's take it out. Let's just say margin S, if I can type the M correctly, and we'll say MS5. Now what that's gonna mean is margin start five. So when I hit save, if I come back to my test, now we'll see on the left-hand side that the margin is off by five. The same way can work if we were to put a div in here. So let's just say we're gonna use a div and say div class. And in this one what we'll do is we'll say M S three, and then we'll do M E three margins on both sides. Let's save this. And what we should also do is let's add a purple background. So let's just add the word purple and I've got a CSS file. So I'll just say purple class is equal to the background color of purple. So you can see it on either side. Now when I save it, notice how I have a left-hand margin and a right-hand margin within the spacing, but I didn't use L and R, I used S and E. Now, for all you watching this, yes, you can also do, instead of MS and ME, you can do MX, which is the margin on the left and the right. So if I say five, save, now it comes in a line both sides. Margins are still the same when it comes to top and bottom where you say margin T or MT and MB when it comes to the bottom. However, when you go left or right now, you now say S or E. 
And perhaps one of my favorite changes that they made in a good way to Bootstrap 5 was gutters. In the past, gutters were built into the grid and then you had to pull them out. Now by default, they're still there, but we can expand and contract onto how gutters work. Let's take a look and see how this is working. I actually have a container and a set of rows sitting in here. I've got call six, call six, call six, and inside of these different columns, I have div classes of padding three and a border with a background light. The reason why I built this, you can see how the gutters work. If I head over to Chrome and refresh the page, notice now how by default, there's some gutter in the middle, but no gutter area in between these areas. What I can do now is I can bring in gutters on either the between, the horizontal, or the vertical. We can use the same principles that we applied to our margin and padding with our spacing as we can to our gutters. So inside of the row, because when you build a grid, there's three components. There's the container, the row, and the column. If you're curious on how these three work, I will put a link in the description below and also here on this page. Inside of here, inside of this row, I'm gonna say G for gutter. So in the past we said M and P for margin and padding. Now we're saying G for gutter. What I can say is I can say GX5. What that means is gutters on the X, which is the start and end, or previously the left and right. When I say five, this is gonna expand out to the rem of five. If I wanna just work on the spacing between the vertical, what I can do then is say G Y, if I can type the right letter, there we go. And now what I get is the default gutter in between and the five right here. So I can always go back to three and make it similar. Well, that's decent, but if I wanna make sure all of the horizontal and the vertical are the same, what I then can do is take out the X or Y and just say, I'll say G5, it's easiest to see. Save, and now the five is equidistance inside the vertical and the horizontal. Now, if you wanna adjust them based upon breakpoints, we can add that too. So if I wanna say G, you know, let's go GSM for small, we'll go two, but as it gets bigger, we'll say G, LG will go five just to make sure we see it. Now what's happening is when it goes below, I'll actually drop this down to just two on its own because we wanna make sure we get the mobile involved. So the G2 will be mobile up to the medium. When it hits the large, we'll have five. If I save, it's gonna remain the same since I'm on the large size, but as I adjust the size, there it goes, now the two comes into play. So I have my gutters working in this design. So this is how you can involve your different design components. The hello world probably shouldn't really be there only because it's not part of the container. So it doesn't look the same. There we go. That's better. So notice how the break point happens that on the large, we're going to have the five different or the five rem for the gutters. It hits the medium and it goes back down to two. By default, don't forget that Bootstrap is mobile first. So what happens is the mobile always catches the first number unless you specify something different. So the G2 essentially is XS and above. And of course we can bring in old Mr. New Friend, XXL. And now what happens is this will still stay until I hit the XXL spot, and now the XXL catches as part of double whammies. We get the gutter and we get the XXL. I hope this helps you in your Bootstrap 5 journey. If this did, throw me a like below so I know it really helped you. And if not, I totally hear you. As always, I'm Hayden Adams with A Designer Who Codes. Have a fantastic day.